Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better at Aquavita. Visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Okay, so let's get this straight. It's a DualSense 5 with an 8-inch screen in it. And sure, you get to use all the remote play capabilities of PlayStation, but you only stick to that. And then at the same time, you can use remote play by itself on any sort of peripheral you want, including a tablet, with a dual with a whole DualSense 5 to it. And $200 for the price. When at the same time, the Logitech G is right there and you can use whatever form of remote play you want. You know, it's nice to see Sony wants to get back in the portable market, but this is just not the way it's done. And a matter of fact, while I'm doing the show tonight, I should just go ahead and fire up my Backbone 1 and use my phone. But, you know what? We're getting a little too ahead. Welcome to the J-Man Show here on K360 Radio. Ryan here and I have a question for you what do you do when you win like are you a fist pumper a woohooer a hand clapper a high fiver I kind of like the high five but if you want to hone in on those winning moves check out Chumba Casino at ChumbaCasino.com choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes there are new game releases weekly plus free daily bonuses so don't wait start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com no purchase necessary VGW void were prohibited by law see terms and conditions 18 plus Judy was boring hello then Judy discovered ChumbaCasino.com it's my little escape now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, what's going on, J360 Legion? How are you all doing today? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, we got to catch up. We got to catch up, y'all. It is the J-Man Show 306, and this is your host, J-Man, of course. It's good to be back here today. I know because we had kind of a bit of the shift in the schedule, you know, I had to do a little bit of a catch-up with you all. But let me just tell you this, though. Regardless of what, this was still technically planned. I know I was supposed to give you a random selection, and I was supposed to give you, like, you know, a power play episode. But fortunately... Because yours truly is in charge and all that stuff. You get both today. So you do get a Power Play episode. And then, of course, you're also getting the J-Man show right now. And let me just say this. Your man has been busy lately. (laughs) Even more so than usual, you know? like, And if it isn't trying to catch up to what has been submitted for J360 Jam 75, which is happening next week, y'all. Then it's also working on stuff to keep myself together, not to mention I had to go to the DMV yesterday. Yeah, you know how beautiful a DMV experience can be, right? Right. But unfortunately, though, I managed to get up early enough and take care of it to the point where I didn't have to go through all that crazy crap like being in the wrong line and all that stuff. You know, I actually managed to use um, a lot of the expressway stuff this time, so managed to make it through inspection okay. Even though that was one hell of a line up there. And then also coming out, managed to go through the drive through so I didn't worry about too much. <laughs> but yeah, you know, them tags. Uh, make sure you look at your tag and see whether you got to go through that or not. Because, you know, it could be one of two things. It could be a peaceful experience, or you could go careening down the pathway to hell. Trying to make sure that you abide by these laws. But all in all, though, everything was fine with that. And then, like, when I came back, I wanted to go ahead and work on the project a little bit longer. I know a lot of you guys have been wondering what that project is. And, well, I'd like to tell you, but I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer. Because at the pace I'm going, it should be ready before expected time. 
But I'm just like looking at this thing and I'm like, yeah, this is working, you know? So I'm staying all in on this thing. And I will go ahead and let you know that it is a J360 TV program. So, you know, a lot more stuff you get to see and very fun. And not to mention, everybody's invited, you know, from some of the people in the Jam Fam and lots of the guests that I've met. And then not to mention collaborators on the outside. Everybody's invited. And especially you guys in the fan base. Now... Because of the way the episodes have been going for the J-Man show and because some people think, oh, he's just going at everybody. It's like, yeah, kind of. I'm going at society for, like, its stupidity and all this other stuff. But the thing about it is, is that, like, I love my fans. I think my fans are great. I think, like, the people have been supportive and, you know, showcasing their love for J360 Productions. You, you all bow to no one. You guys are amazing, and I respect every single one of you. So, you know, don't think that J-Man's coming at you hard. No, no, no. I don't go at my fans. I go at those people that, once again, act like they're not fans, but they always want to keep an eye on what I'm doing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, deep down, some people wish they were me. Let's just say that. But I want to be perfectly honest, though. I do respect my fans. I do respect the people that have been there ever since, like, all the way back in 2016. Or even in 2006 when, like, you know, we had more short films and all that stuff. Like, you guys have just been there and you enjoy every bit of it. So, hey, I'm I'm not going to let you down. There's going to be plenty more to come. So, that's the whole point of why this next big project needs to work in addition to other things. Not only that, I've been uh, working on trying to think of should we stay on Spreaker or not. So, yeah, there is that kind of thing right there in the back of my mind, too. I'm thinking this. If we could go ahead and do maybe one more year with them, you know, one more year, that should be pretty cool, right? What do you all say? Like, I mean, it it works out for you guys. I mean, because some of you diehard fans will follow me anywhere. (laughs) That's why I had no choice but to bring the Twitch back. I was like, okay. Okay, well, you know, because a lot of y'all love that. Some of y'all haven't left Twitch even when Twitch was going through its problems, or if it still is, or whatever. Um, I brought it back, you know what I mean? In addition to, like, what we do on YouTube.com slash J360Productions. And for those of you uh, Rumble fans out there, yes, Rumble.com. Or is it Rumble.tv? Either way, we're on Rumble, too. So I was like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. quite a lot of this but um you know guys like one way or another it's just been trying to make the experience here at j360 productions better for those of you out there so you know whether you like j360 radio whether you like j360 tv you will be pleased from what we got going on here and those of you that have really been paying attention you've noticed that you can listen to the podcast is on um j360 tv as well now unfortunately you may have to deal with a lot of youtube ads or whatever it, it just happens Okay, like and keep in mind is whatever the little ad they throw up in there, I have no control over. Hell, I'm not even getting paid for it. So like when YouTube does that crap, I'm like, oh man, come on, throw a few bones my way. I mean, I do pretty good anyway, but throw throw some bones, man. You know, throw the bones. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a few bits of that YouTube money, but you know what? Like I said, that's not the overall spectrum of the thing. It's the only thing. I mean, no, no, no. What it is, though, like, as long as I can give you guys a great experience and you guys keep tuning in every week, we're doing pretty good. And speaking of which, everything's in the green. So, like, everything I told you guys about in 305, yeah, very true. And I've also noticed, like, more and more people that are sitting there either angry at what I'm saying is because they're looking at their own life and realize I was right, or at the same time, they already knew I was right from the beginning and still can't handle it. So it's just wild shit like that. But not to mention, in addition to that big project that's coming together, you also have a huge event happening. You know, lots of you J360 fans know that this is coming. From the last week of September all the way to the first week of November. Yeah, the biggest event in J360 Productions is happening, and all of the J360 shows are involved. Every single one of them. From the Mini Bites to the J-Man Show, there might be a few special instances in between. You never know, the mixtapes might come back. It's a whole lot of greatness happening, and then, like, I would love to tell you the name of it, but you already know, and those of you that are new to this, I'm going to keep you intrigued a little bit longer, because you'll be seeing uh, promos for that soon enough. Okay, now, speaking of which, 
As far as the website goes, j360productions.com is still under construction, and it's going well. It's not it's not terrible, and I'm loving how this is all turning out for it. Not to mention those of you that just released uh, EPs and albums, they will be featured on the sidebar on j360productions.com. So, hey, kudos to you. And speaking of which, also, for those of you that are going to release albums, release new songs and singles, I am bringing that feature back for that. So, yeah, you know, just stay in step. Stay in step with me. We'll go ahead and we'll keep bringing that stuff out. And, you know, like, J360Productions.com is going to be ten times better than it was. Just this time, though, you know, we all got to pay attention to it. Because isn't that something, like, we're all bombarded with different screens all the time, and it makes you wonder, should I even throw this main website at you? But the thing about it is, yeah, yeah, really, I should. Because this is the best time for you guys to enjoy that. And not to mention, you know how I feel about social media sometimes. That's why I was sitting there wondering, should I go ahead and just knock out all the stuff on Instagram and restart it? But I'm not going to do that. Nope. Not going to do that at all. Matter of fact, what's going up on there is going to be going on there (laughs) forever. And those of you that asked me about TikTok, yeah, I still have a TikTok. It's at J360TV. All right. I just haven't put anything on it yet, but I already said too much. I said something, but I didn't say something, so stay with it, damn it. (laughs) But yeah, that's pretty much what's going on right now. And like I said before, seems like a lot to deal with, but this whole thing's a labor of love. And the truth is, like, even for those of you out there that work in music, work in cartoons, work in, like, any sort of medium, you know... These are labors of love for us, and the thing is, is that you either love what you do, or you just are wasting your time. And the sad part about it is, there's lots of people that are wasting their time, but they're being hateful about it, and vindictive coming at people all the time. And before you say, like you, Jay, no, not like me. (laughs) I love doing what I'm doing, but I have to always deal with people out there who giving up. See what I'm saying? And it's not exactly a fun ride for them, but for me, she... I just keep on going, y'all. <laughs> That's how you manage to make 306 episodes. Uh, speaking of which, though, I've been meaning to ask you guys about a few things. The hotline. Now, for anybody who wants to announce when they got like a new album or when they got like a new music video or whatever, the hotline is up to you. I just need you to record something for at least 60 seconds. That's all. All right, that's that's the total moment for like the J360 Radio Hotline. So, anytime you guys want to do a promo or go ahead and speak about like the new tracks that you have dropped on J360 Jams or any J360 show for that matter, you know you call the hotline number, which is two four zero nine zero three one six three four. All right, and it better not be no stuff in there about like J Man's a think. I will come and get you. <laughs> But yeah, like, guys, that that whole thing's been there for all of you. And um, for interactive shows and stuff, yes, we are doing those again. So you just have to stay tuned, all right? Meanwhile, uh, now, as far as, like, the power play goes, uh, speaking of which, somebody was talking to me not too long ago. I think it was either Marco or it was Al. And they were telling me about, like, how the N64 is. And I'm sitting there thinking this. I'm like, damn, uh, you must really dislike that era. Because, like... I remember Mark talking about the N64 controller and how, like, it's just a very strange controller and sometimes it seems like it's not comfortable. But at the same time, I'm like, I never had a problem with it. And then, like, you know, Al was telling me all about, like, the N64 and how, like, um, what his point of views were. And I'm, like, sitting there thinking this to myself. I'm like, well, you know, back in 1996, I mean, I had one and... It was a fun system. Like, I enjoyed it so much, I I regret ever getting rid of it. That's why, like, when, like, GameStop used to have them things wrapped up in a pack, and I think you could buy them for, like, what, 30 bucks? I went right over there, and first year of college, I remember, I went right over there and bought one. Simply because I was like, I miss playing Mario 64, and I still had, like, all my old games. Why did I get rid of the system? Oh, that's right, because it... I don't know, it was weird. It would make this crackling, popping sound and then just mess up the video and everything. Yeah, yeah, that was that was weird. But anyway, anyway, anyway. The one that I do have, though, it still sits right there in storage, and I was looking at that, and I was like, 
hmm. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta pay attention when J-Man does those hmms. But the whole point is, it's like, is it really that bad as what they say? So nowadays, I kind of created something, you know, for that series because of my friends. And I thank them all the time. I'm going to go ahead and do some Nintendo challenges, baby. Like, I know how Nintendo has seemingly problems with video creators, I guess because the brand, we must protect the brand. I don't understand that, but the way they go about it, they go a little too strong arm about that stuff sometimes. But the thing about it is, like, I love the Nintendo 64. I actually had a good time playing it back in the day, you know, from... Mario 64, Star Fox 64, Donkey Kong 64. You see a bit of a pattern here. Um, Orca Reign of Time, Majora's Mask, which I never got to finish, by the way. That is due time with that. That needs to get done. And then not to mention, like, with all the cool stuff for retro gaming, it's like, yeah, that, that needs to make a comeback. <laughs> oh, boy. I used to hate that line, but, yeah, we got to bring that out. So... As of right now, I gotta say, Marco, Al, thank you. Thank you for inspiring me to go ahead and say, hmm, I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna show you exactly what this is all about. That game console is one of the best game consoles, not to mention with WCW and WO Revenge. I will not have any more insults to the console of God's greatness. Well, actually, that's the PlayStation 3, but whatever. Or no, the Dreamcast. Or no, like, all the systems I own are pretty good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> oh, man. I've been tooting my horn a lot in this episode. But then again, this is my damn show, so deal with it. Uh, speaking of which, so, for those of you that saw Blue Beetle, can I ask you all something? Is the movie good? Like, what, what are y'all saying? Because some of y'all have, like, conflicting messages, like... I mean, you can't believe Rotten Tomatoes. You can't believe um, IGN. You cannot believe any of those publications because they're bought and sold, and you got to make it look good, right? It's got to be rated from good to excellent, right? That's how they go about that stuff. So you can't go by any of that. So anytime they say, it's 80% fresh Rotten Tomatoes, I'm like, yeah, say you're a shill without telling me you're a shill. I just need to know. Is the movie good or bad? Like, what, what? it's up to you. See, I've never read Blue Beetle comics, and I never dived into the character except for, like, when I played Injustice. So, and he was pretty badass in that. So I ain't mad about that. You know what I mean? My DC Comics knowledge on that character is a little lacking. So, you know, any uh, anything you guys can come up with about, like, whether the movie was okay or, like, is enjoyable fine but don't go to the go to argue um you gotta go to the theater with like you know low expectations um you gotta uh, i mean the movie was too good for its own good like what they used to say about spider-man 2 once again are you saying that the movie is good then is that what you're saying shit's insane man like it's okay if you didn't like it and it's okay if like you didn't care for, like, the characters, or you felt something was amiss, lacking. I mean, was the third act weak? Was the second act a little too long? Like, what exactly is wrong with this feature? And is James Gunn the same as Jeff Johns? I mean, like, what, what exactly are we doing? <laughs> List goes on and on. You know what, though? I think it's amazing how we all ascribe, like, who's in charge of the top of that division to everything. It, it's so amazing. When at the same time, you should look at the director and the writer and the people involved in the production. Keep it about the production. Don't worry about who's up at top all the time. You know, like, I could go at Kevin Feige about everything, but remember, years before, when the Avengers first came together in 2012, this man could do no wrong. Same with Josh Whedon. Could do no wrong at one time. And then all of a sudden, all the other sides started coming out. Like I've said this before, it's like, you know, you know how you like you have a stage and a backstage? Well, you see, the show stage is not the show anymore. It's the backstage that's now more of a show, and these people are lapping it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, all this other stuff, all these other controversies and things that are happening behind the scenes has more attention than the show itself. I think that kind of kills the show in general. 
Like, when it comes to an actual movie, whether it's in a shared universe or not, you focus on that installment, and then you look and see about it from top to bottom, how does it hold to you? You know, like how a lot of people are now saying, uh, you know, Black Panther was kind of an average movie at best. I mean, it wasn't all that great. I, I, I don't know where all the hype came from. I think it was because of the, because of, because of everything that surrounded it. It's like, really? You're having that whole hindsight game, are you? And the funny part about hindsight conversations are, is that we, we talk about these interesting things. Like David Ayer will come up and talk about like regrets he has for his movies. But the thing about it is, he made a movie. He made a movie that people went and saw. You understand what I'm saying? You got people dreaming and wishing that they could actually do things, but now they always have a gripe and a complaint about why they can't do something, such as like a Netflix-approved camera. I'm like, wow, that sounds more <laughs> that sounds more dumber than like the idea of, hey, we got to check all these boxes for Amazon Studios. Tell your story, damn it. Make your movie with your phone if you need to. I mean, a lot of people were doing that. Remember when the iPhone was actually revolutionary and the, they said, it's the game changer. It's changing the way movies are made. We, we, we got something here. You know, this is why I say society is trash, man. Because you guys will find a problem with everything instead of just embracing and just thinking of it as a tool. You know, you'll, you'll find a problem and a crutch with everything. Complain about stuff when at the same time, it's just something there that you could use or not use. Like, hell, my, my Samsung phone does pretty good videos too. In addition to like, you know, my Canon. I'm like always sitting there about, or my, or my Nikon, you know, it's just like, ah, they're just things that help me tell my story. Damn it. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing here to be upset about and all that crap. Like, how come we can't just do the things that we want to do? We always got to be by script or we always got to be by somebody else's rule. And keep in mind, it's not really a rule. It's a guideline because the person that came up with this crap, they're not telling you the stuff that is necessary. Like, you look at things like Film Courage. Film Courage has some pretty good videos on it. But those guys are manby pamby in their way through the filmmaking industry. Oh, you know, we, we take the people by the hand. Don't do that. Just just go about this safely. Just blow it up. You got to know what you got to do. You got to make it like this. Oh, yeah, don't do it like that. It's like the craziest shit, isn't it? Like, even what I said earlier about, like, Sony creating this PlayStation Portal. Now, I'm not trying to say, like... It's wrong for them to have an idea. All I'm just saying is, is that that thing is pretty bare bones, and not to mention you're paying 200 bucks for it. So who exactly are they catering it to? They're probably catering it to those people out there that want to be like, oh, I own this, by the way. Yeah, this is amazing here. This is really, really cool, because the PSP and the Vita alone had more features, and they were able to do that remote play thing a lot better than seemingly this thing does. And of course, because it's PlayStation and first party owned, you're going to be dealing with that one product all the time. Or like the new earbuds they got coming out, when at the same time, yeah, that can stay too. I mean, if anything, I would just go for like the headset. Like the headset ain't going to bother you as much. But you know, like when it comes to earbuds, like how, how good are you guys about earbuds in general? Think about it. Or you're just paying for the PlayStation brand. See what I'm saying? It's it's like, say you're flexing without telling me you're flexing, pretty much. As for me, myself, I'll stick with the Backbone 1. Yeah, third-party peripheral, but it's officially licensed by whichever version you buy. So if you buy, like, the Xbox version of it, you know, you have the Xbox version with the pads and everything. Or you have the PlayStation 1 with the, um, you know, with the pads and everything like everything from an xbox controller is on that backbone and everything from a playstation controller is on that backbone so i would use that stick with that and it's more versatile for me plus it doesn't give a damn about what remote play i do use so it's more value see what i'm saying and just like anything regarding the cameras that you use that's supposed to be more value if you use your phone camera a lot more than say like a dslr or a mirrorless that's entirely up to you. But if I don't have like my, you know, my DSLR or my mirrorless on me, I'm going to use that, you know, I'm going to use that phone. That's just the way that is. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's called variety, damn it. Like, you know, that's the number one thing I got to say. Why do you guys have to play by script, stay one dimensional, 
That seems to be the ongoing thing about the future. We live in the future, right? I mean, far as I know, dystopian or utopian, whatever the hell you want to call it, but we live in the future. And you got all this one-dimensional bullshit based off of somebody's stupid opinion or otherwise grand review because they got the backing of a brand and all this other stuff. No, here's the thing. Go find something that is useful for your budget. Make your budget work. Go ahead and get like a couple of friends or a couple of actors that you know that can do the job. And then have a nice storyline and maybe, what, two to three location sets and make that work. Or at best have one location set, make it work out for you. I, I, I'm just saying, like people nowadays figure, hey, I gotta make something that's big and bad like the Avengers in order to have some attention. Not really. Do you know how to sell a product? Do you know how to focus on like what exactly you're trying to get out here? Like what stories are you trying to tell? And don't stick to script. Like always change it up a little bit. You only stick to script is when you're in production. But it's funny though, because like I said, there are people out here that have a hard time podcasting. I don't know what you mean my podcast about. And I'm like, well, why the fuck are you bothering me about it? I got 305 episodes at the time. I, I told this person this. And you see, the reason why I said that is not to make that person feel bad. It's really just supposed to inspire them. It's like this, because here's the thing. I know what my story is. And I know what I'm telling you guys. And I know, like, I'm 100% behind the things that I say. You know what I mean? Like, you got people out there saying, I'm hoping that I get a few views. I'm hoping that I get listeners. I'm hoping that I get the... Hope without faith and faith without effort ain't worth a damn, son. Shut up. You sound like an asshole. Get to work. You know what I mean? Like, I meet content creators that do that crap all the time. Then again, I wonder if they're actually creators because, you know, they, they love stirring up drama and all that BS. I, I don't really understand, like, why it's so hard for them to do their own work. I, I, and it makes me wonder, hey, if you didn't do any of that stuff, can you point me in the direction of the person who did before you slapped your label on it? You know what I mean? Like, I see this stuff in any of it. Like, oh, that's why sometimes I say, like, content creating is so hollow. But there are times where it's like, you know, I, I get it. It's hard. And you're always wondering about that the view count. And that's the beauty thing, the view count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck the view count. To hell with all that stuff. Like, YouTube did this shit. You gotta be perfectly honest with you, YouTube did this nonsense where, like, oh, it had to be in the first 10 seconds of viewership. Man, fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? The first 10 seconds of viewership, huh? When that stuff uploads, it uploads. If people see it and they stick around, good for them. If they always about the stuff, good for them. But, you know, at the end of the day, because that stuff's the first thing you see when you upload video and content and all, no wonder some of y'all are breaking out in highs every time you start to say, I hope this video works enough. I didn't want to make this video. I didn't... You made the video, jackass. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I see people do this crap all the time. You get no pity from me. If you're a creator and I'm a creator, which, yeah, isn't that something? And you're still doing the whole, like, you know, man in the mirror sort of scenarios... Or like, okay, okay, let's just be conscious. Person in the mirror scenario. And you're having a meeting of the minds with yourself. And you don't know how to figure this out. Well, guess what? You get your wishy-washy Charlie Brown ass out of the way. I got stuff I got to do. If I know damn well the J-Man show has to land. And then here comes the power play. And then here comes jams and stuff like that. It's ready to go. Get out my fucking way. That's what I always say. People sit right there and be like, how are you able to do that stuff? Because I make decisions, you make guesses, you figure it out. Think about it. <laughs> Shoot, gotta go, gotta go, damn it. You know, but I do it with the same same charisma and charm and sweet-tempered way like I did in that little scenario right there. Because it's true. I mean, I see people all the time. Bigger, better than me, got better budgets, got better equipment, and can't use it for shit. So that's the most wonderful thing. I could be, you know, out there with not necessarily my Android phone. I could be out there with something that's a real piece of crap, like an old flip phone back in the day, right? Which you could actually record audio in. And I could still make a podcast episode and get it done and upload it while you're still sitting there thinking about, damn, what do I have to talk about? 
And you know the funny part is there are people out there that be like this. You, you should you, you should help me out. You should I ain't giving you shit, son. Like I remember talking to somebody, I had all this content out here. He's like, nah, nah, I ain't gonna do it. I was like, I was like, you might as well sit by your damn self then, you jerk. All that content, and your myopic ass is missing it. You know, like some of y'all suffer from myopia. Even though you have 2020 vision, you can't see for shit. And you want to know why? Because you're missing. You miss the big picture, and you know the small picture got away from you. You keep playing small games, you're going to have small rewards. Me, on the other hand, well, with my astigmatism having ass, how come I see things brighter than any of y'all do? How come I see the big picture? How come I'm always planning for, like, you know, the greater things to come, which are taking place right now because your man is not staying in the same spot. He moving up and over, beyond. And by the time I'm gone, I don't even know who the hell you are at that point. I hope I inspire a lot of y'all to actually go and do the work, but you got to do the work. And if you're still sitting there making excuses, well, I can't help you. This is how you lose alliances. This is how you lose friendships. This is how you lose collaborations because you're not working with the right people or you work with people that are allegedly famous and popular, but then you find out they're not. The joke's on you. That's why at the end of the damn day, like, you know, hey, somebody might not have a whole lot of subscribers, a whole lot of viewership, but at the end of the day, things change all the fucking time. Things are always in a state of flux. It's your ass that stays stationary. You think about it. Huh? Huh? Yeah. So, hey. Switch up them styles, baby. Change it up. <laughs> and yeah, you stay safe, you dead. Things like that. But, you know, hey, I've already said enough, and indeed, I'm enjoying doing these breakfast episodes for you all. I haven't done a Saturday special in a long time. And you know something? I think I may bring it back again. Oh, yes. But, hey, you know, like, look, I'm not trying to diss and dog society too much. I mean, there are some great things in it. Like, you know, if you want to do video game streaming and stuff like that, well, do it. You know what I mean? And have some fun. Nowadays, everybody ain't having no fun anymore. You see them all the time. Are you doing this stuff for fun? I want to do a bit of money and stuff like that. Well, yeah, money's okay. And, you know, damn if we all don't need it. But <laughs> uh, you go ahead and talk about some shit you don't care about and try to make some money for it. Yeah, that's cute. That's real cute. I ain't for it, bro. I'm going to have some fun in my money. I put it that way. But, hey, while we're all still doing this little catch-up thing, I got to say, um, as per usual, I'm loving this journey. I love this adventure. I wouldn't change it up for anything. And, you know, as I get where I need to be, whether it's here on the East Coast or it's over there in the West, everything's going to be looking stellar. And I am not saying guesses like, I think it'll work out. It'll work out just fine. So, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> But I, I, I'm telling you this, when I talk about those things, I want you to watch out for those kind of people because there are people that are not about it like J-Man is, all right? There are people that claim to be better at it. There are people out there that'll always say like, hey, everybody's going to eat, everybody's going to be fine. But then there are people that say that stuff and they have no heart of backing it up. You understand? Kind of like a pyramid scheme. Oh, you can make money too. But you're going to make money on your own way, not through what I'm doing. See, I make more money. You don't make that shit unless you got a whole pyramid of your own. You see what I mean? So at best, be careful of who you go into business with. Be careful of who you make alliances, collaborations, all that stuff with. Like, And don't forget about your identity and your stance about everything. Because while at the same time some people can say like, Man, we about this whole group together. You need to stay firm about your individuality. What lines do you not cross? See, because I got a lot of podcasters pissed at me about that. Like, yeah, we about a unit until I say, well, hold on a minute. This doesn't make any sense. What the hell am I standing against? What does this have to do with me? And all this other stuff. You see what I'm saying? And then as soon as they start breaking out and they start being like, oh, you don't care about none of it, whatever. And I'll be like, fine, leave. That's how you know. See what I'm saying? That you're okay whether you're with the group or not with that group. That's what you have to be like. Because people will rope you into some crazy shit. You know, redirect you into some nonsense. If you ain't careful. 
And which is really, really sad because, I mean, we all want to fit in, don't we? Don't we all want to be a part of a group and we actually want to be there the whole time, you know, sit at that table with all the other popular people and all that stuff, but then you realize how hollow the shit is. And at the same time, you don't have to sit at their table when you're building your own. See, I'm building my own. I don't give a damn about any of that stuff. If you wanted to be there, be there. That's what I'm always going to be saying to you guys. But anyway, we went kind of around the world a little bit, didn't we? <laughs> how did we go from like, uh, how did we go from PlayStation peripherals all the way to like, you know, the the stance and the standing of a person in society, huh? Well, because it's all about values. What does it mean to you? What exactly is it all about in the end? What do you get out of it? Same thing with 305, right? See how it comes full circle? But hey, I talked to you off long enough, and I am out of scrapple, so breakfast is done. I got to get going, okay? Oh, you guys are probably wondering what scrapple is. Pick parts and cornmeal for a better balanced breakfast. <laughs> and a Delaware delicacy. Be about this life, damn it. That's what we got. We got scrapple here. But um, it tastes good with eggs, so don't you be cringing at me. You know how you eat bacon? Well, that's got bacon and everything but the squeal in it. Now you know what scrapple is. A little quick tidbit on that. Good food, too. Uh, but I got to get on out of here, though. So y'all take care of yourselves. This is J-Man signing off. We'll meet up again soon. Peace. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.